just pressed the record button slash live button on Facebook, and I'm a little, being a little bit quiet right now because, as you can tell, I'm actually in a hotel. Um, if you read the description, then you are aware that I am at the tail end of a uh, an event here, and perfect, my audio works. Um, and this event is here in Vegas, Las Vegas, Nevada, in the U.S. And thousands upon thousands of people came here from all over the world. There are people from Germany, from the Ukraine, from Australia. I mean, it was amazing. I heard so many success stories. Right, so. What was this event about? So as you know, I'm on a mission to help at least 10 people to become debt-free by 2020. This is the first step in my mission because personally, I have a dream to be able to create um, enough wealth, not only within my life, but within so many other people's lives so that we can raise the boats, raise the financial boats for so many people because it is ridiculous how much people are in debt right now, how much stress they're under because they are not able to take care of their families, um, because they're going into to to bankruptcy, and this is there is so many ways that you can avoid this. But the one way that I found that re- does not require you to be a salesperson is with forex. And the event this weekend was all about that. Well, that in personal development and lifting lifting yourself and your team up. So, what exactly am I talking about here? So, I found forex actually a couple of years ago. Long story short. Um, at the time, I wasn't ready to focus on it. I had other things going on, and I decided that this was something that everyone needs to know about because it was not available to you and I about 20 years ago, um, and that until about 20 years ago because that was when the internet happened. Now, why is that important? It's because at, before the internet happened, only those who had millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, like the banks, had the opportunity to do this, and you actually had to be in the trading houses of New York, London, Tokyo. Etc. So with it with with the internet, you're now able to take part in this without having a huge upfront uh, investment, um, without having to travel, without having any having to need any of that, right? And so with forex, you can do it from your phone, you can do it from your laptop, and I'm so blessed. I'm so excited that I've partnered with a company that provides the tools and resources for you to be successful with this. Now, how do they do that? Well. Um, the two people who founded this company, they saw that there were people not necessarily being scammed about about learning how to trade, but they were just being charged thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, um, sometimes as much as a year's worth of college for some people. And they wanted to make sure that this came in the hands for anybody who was interested in changing their life and improving their financial future. So they created this company and not only do they provide you an academy to learn how to trade forex they also teach you how to trade crypto if that's what you're interested in and they provide you the tools and direct mentorship to be able for allow you to shorten your learning curve minimize your risk and maximize your profits now obviously past results are not typical and they do not guarantee or dictate your success i'm simply sharing with you what's possible okay so let me go ahead and share with you a couple of um big uh, takeaways that I took from this weekend, and then I'll get into some of the trades that happened last week, and then a little bit of setup of what I'm planning on doing uh, this upcoming week. Now, um, if you are on Facebook, there is a link somewhere above or below this video, um, and if not, I will put it here in the chat, because I may not have actually tagged myself at the time of this recording. So I just put in the chat a link to my page. Um, If you want more information, please send me a message um, or go to my page and follow my journey. But seriously, if you really want to um, curb your learning curve, obviously I will be here to help you along the way. But I have a day job in programming, I have a business, and I'm learning Forex. So if you really want to shorten your learning curve fast and get into pr- and uh, and you know do what you need to do to get there faster, then you have to get involved and you have to get um, uh, these tools and resources. So. Um, the notes that I want to share with you today, I'm going to go over very briefly. Um, over the next few weeks, I'm going to go more in depth into some of these things that were shared because honestly, this is things that people are unaware of or forget from time to time. And these are things that you need to understand in order to be successful, not just in business and Forex, but in life. So first of all, um, when it comes to trading, right? Um, a lot of people these days, when they think of getting additional income or they think of something like network marketing or direct sales, um, they think of 
Oh, thank you, Nonos. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, they think of get-rich-quick schemes, and that's not what Forex is. Yes, you can make a lot of money in a very short amount of time, but you can also lose a lot of money in a very short amount of time. It's an investment, right? But when you learn how to read the charts and you learn how to minimize your risk, you can actually um, create that um, uh, income that you dream of. So the reason I say that is because most people, most people wait two weeks for a paycheck, but can't find the patience to wait three days for a setup that's going to pay them the same, if not more, um, for their trades. Now, again, passion is not typical and do not guarantee nor dictate your future success, just telling you it's possible. The other uh, next point I want to share is that um, there's a mindset, personal development mindset, that if you have five broke friends, you know, you're going to be the sixth broke, broke friend. And uh, I heard something this weekend uh, from a gentleman named Mike Miles, who uh, started a the Dallas Trade House, and he is now like banking in trading, right? It, it's amazing. Um, obviously, I don't I don't remember exactly the number he said, um, and I don't want to give you a false impression because it was not an overnight success, right? Um, but he said that this is this is of a, a false truth right while yes your surroundings and your environment determine your your thought processes um, things that you you decide to do in your life um, and just kind of where you're going to limit yourself because if you've got friends that are telling you that you can't do something or that it's not something that's you know for you you will tend to believe it right they're not going to be people who are lifting you up and saying you can do it you can grow you can be better faster you know more prosperous and so he was saying, that while, yes, that is sometimes true, the law of attraction works both ways. So if you are broke, if you have a broke mindset, if you are thinking of lack and um, the things that you don't have, then you are going to create that for yourself and attract those people to you. So instead of focusing on what you don't have, instead of focusing on your lack, you need to focus on what you want, on what your future is. You need to have that vision. Hey, Asia, thank you so much for joining. And so I really liked that um, because it, it was a different take on something I've heard over and over and over and over again. And it just makes sense, right? Uh, at, least, at least if you know uh, and understand the power of law of attraction. Um, the next point I wanted to share is that for those who are trading, some people don't understand that most traders, um, T-R-A-D-E-R-S, most traders are actually what's called retail traders, which means that no matter how much money you have, even if you have $100 million to trade with, you are not going to move the market. So you can't predict, you can't actually influence the market. You can only look at it and based off of historical data and patterns, you can make an informed decision about where it's going to go and how the banks and the ones who are actually making those big moves, how they're going to react inside the market. Um, let's see. I already explained that. Um, Okay, so this next part was actually something that was really big for me. Um, I personally know like the end goal of what I want to do with my life. You know, I, I want to create, um, so I want to do a lot of things, but two big things in, in my heart uh, right now. The first one is that I want to create an apartment complex that is basically a bunch of tiny homes inside. And what tiny homes are is that they're smaller spaces, um, so you don't have as much stuff accumulating inside of it. Uh, and so what that is, is like they might move a wall and it looks like a different room. Maybe they pull down the wall and it becomes a bed. So it's it seems like it's a larger space, but it, it takes up less space. And so why is this important? I want to do this and I want to create this because I want it to be a place for the homeless. I want to give them a place, a safe place to rest, to sleep, to regenerate and rejuvenate and get on their feet again. I want this place to be a place where um, they can feel human again because most, uh, maybe not most, but I've heard that a lot of homeless people don't feel um not so that they don't feel human, but, but they feel dehumanized because of how the rest of the population sees them. So I want to give them a place to clean up, get a haircut, um, learn some new skill sets like programming or social media and digital marketing um, or trading. That way they can get on their feet, you know, learn some life skills like maybe cooking and cleaning and things like that for themselves, and then get back out um, and live their lives. There's no reason why we should have the number of homeless that we have. And so um, that's one of my big goals is to have that apartment complex 
product so that they can do that and be able to create their life and get back on their feet again. So that's the first one. The second one thing that I want to do is I want to teach kids middle school and up on trading and the new rules of money because they're not being taught in schools. They're not being taught how to um, balance their checkbook and, and any of that. And so I, those are the two big things that I want to do. And so one of the big themes about this weekend is vision. When you don't have a vision, when the people, then there's no vision for the people, they perish, right? And so something that I um, took away from this is that you have to have vision and you have to have conviction about your vision. You have to be strong in, in your desire to do whatever it takes to create that result. Because if you don't have that vision, first of all, you're not going to know what steps is, is required to get there. You're not going to know, uh, have an idea of how long it might take to get there or who to talk to or, you know, what tools you need to accomplish those goals. So you have to have a vision to, for that. You have to have conviction because there's going to be people who are going to say that you you don't know what you're doing. How can you do that? Because you've never been there before. You know, they're going to say that you're silly or you're stupid or make fun of you. And you have to have conviction for there's not, other people are not going to see your vision. They were not given the same vision that you were given. And so it's important to recognize that, right? Um, because without vision, the people perish. Uh, let's see. Um, also, uh, people follow people with vision because they know where they're going and they can see um, how what they want to do with their life correlates to that path. The next thing is that losses, most people when they when they think of losses and they think that I've I've lost, I failed. But if you think of it in that way, it 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 rewires your brain to think that you are a failure and that you can't um create that wealth and that desire and that um um result that you're looking for. But instead of thinking of it as a loss or a failure, think of it as a lesson learned because every mistake that we make is not really a mistake. It's simply something that didn't work out as we intended. And it's a way for us to learn um, and, and, and um, be able to grow from that. Um, so the company that I was talking about that provides this education, um, this direct mentorship, which is, by the way, over 60 hours each week of direct mentorship to help you minimize your risk, maximize your um, return on investment, and be able to become a professional trader, right? I'm not necessarily a licensed trader because that's different, right? And when I say professional, I mean someone who's able to create a full-time income on a part-time basis, okay? That's what I mean by that. And again, past results not typical. They do not guarantee or dictate your future success. Simply telling you what's possible. So this company that's providing that education, that's providing these tools and providing this mentorship and the community, because like I said, there is hundreds of thousands of people across the globe that are part of this of, of this community. So last year, um, they more than quadrupled their sales, which means that they are booming, which means that there are people who see what the possibilities are with Forex and are able to um, create that within their life. And in fact, while yes, sales do not... Um, they guarantee that kind of thing. What happens is, is that all throughout this weekend, all throughout this weekend, there were so, so many success stories. And in fact, there were at least two people who achieved one of the top ranks in the company. Now, when I say top ranks, for those of you that may be aware of what direct sales network marketing is, you don't have to do the business. You could simply trade and be happy and create your own income and, you know, not tell a soul, right? But for the people that see this and, and recognize how powerful this is and what you can actually do to help people with it, you you can share it and make money from that. That's what direct sales network marketing are. Okay. So I was so thrilled to hear about those kinds of stories. Um, the next thing I wanted to share is that your decisions do not create your results. Your consistent actions are what create results. If you're not consistent, you're not going to build up that muscle, right? If you're not consistently doing videos and sharing with people what you know and how you can help them, they're not going to know who you are and how you can help them, right? If you're not consistently learning and implementing what you're learning for whatever skill set it might be, whether it's Forex, digital marketing, programming, whatever, you know, you are not able to um, truly grasp that that information and, and leverage that to, um, to you. Um, most people work harder on themselves, on, um, work harder on their jobs than themselves. But if you flip that around, like Jim Rohn said, if you work harder on yourself than on your job, you're going to make a lot more money because most people, they stop learning after high school. And when you stop learning, first of all, you start dying because we as human beings, we are supposed to be learning more, right? We are supposed to be growing and, um, finding ways to create more of whatever it is we want in our life. Yeah. <laughs> 
And so if you are working on yourself, um, you're raising your emotional IQ, you're um, gaining more skill sets and becoming more valuable to the marketplace, then you are um, going to be able to earn more because you're providing more value. Uh, the next thing I want to share, and it looks like I've got a few, just a couple more, about two, three, four, five, about six more pieces here. So something that uh, was shared today, and there are several people who were um, sharing their experiences and sharing their knowledge, uh, and this one really um, honed in for me because they said whatever shows up in the physical first shows up in the spiritual. Now this doesn't mean, this isn't like a, uh, a Christian thing, this isn't anything like that, um, but it is a metaphysical thing. So, for example, um, Tony Robbins, right? He talks about energy, and you know, when you're when you're laid back and you're got your shoulders slumped, and you know, you're just kind of like, right? Um, your energy is low, and you're going to be less likely to mem uh, remember things, like if you're at a, a, a training or whatever. And so, um, that energy just kind of keeps you you quiet right but if you are leaning forward and you you've got your pen ready and you you know you've, you've got your energy up you are more likely to remember whatever it is that you're doing so it's a reflection of the physical part right so you have to start in the spiritual which is energy which is a vibration right when you start in the in the spiritual it shows up in the physical uh let's see um something else so this seems like it should be um, just uh, common sense, common knowledge. But the thing is, is that a lot of people, when they come up against something new, they say it's hard. They say they can't get it. They say, I can't do this. You know, whatever excuse that they're, that they're going to give to not keep going. But here's the thing. It's not that it's hard. It's that it's new. It's something that you're not used to. It's something that you haven't done before. So it's not a muscle that you've built up. It's not something that you um, know fully, right? So you have to recognize that anything that's new seems hard at first, but it's not hard. It's just new. Um, <clears throat> The next thing is that in order to grow, you've got to eliminate bad habits. Bad habits could be, um, you know, if you're doing drugs, right? Uh, some drugs are actually healthy for you and um, actually are good for you. Some drugs are not, right? But regardless of whatever it is, if it's something that keeps your brain foggy, if it's something that um, does not benefit you, if it's something that keeps you from working on your dreams, whether it's alcohol or something else, or maybe it's people, right? Maybe you are around negative, toxic people that keep you down, that, that are creating toxicity within your life. Whatever those bad habits are, watching TV, whatever those bad habits are, you have to eliminate that from your life because otherwise you will continue to have what you've always had and you, you will not be able to create the results that you're looking for. So you've got to show up daily and consistently, eliminate those bad habits. And the last three things are this. First of all, if you are too big for the small things, you will be too small for the big things. Let me say that again. If you are too big for the small things, for example, if you are in business and you're too too important to help out, you know, a team member or a sideline team member or, you know, whatever. If you're too big for that kind of thing, you are too small for the for the greater idea of what you want. So you need to be humble and you have to be giving. Now, obviously, I'm not saying give give to the point where, you know, you're all out because you have to replenish your cup. You can't fill from an empty cup. But you have to recognize that if you are too big to do those small things, um, then you are too small to do the big things. Well, last two things. Life is about progress. Life is about multiplying yourself and becoming better, stronger, faster, right? More efficient. Um, and you have to become better than you are if you want to grow and have more in life. And last but not least, everyone wants to spend. But this company, these people, and me, we want to make sure that you are able to create the income that you dream of. There are so many things in life that you can do that. You can do it with another job. You can do it by selling your own stuff on eBay. Um, you know, you can go into direct sales, network marketing, whatever the case may be. But with Forex, most people don't want to be salespeople. They, they want to create that income, but they don't want to put in that kind of work or they're scared of it. Or, you know, they, want, they don't want people to feel like, oh, they just want me to, they just think I'm just going to get their money. 
okay, fine. You know, if you don't want to do that, learn Forex because you can create an income that you're looking for without having to talk to anybody, right? So if you if that's something that you are looking to do, definitely reach out to me, right? Um, but for now, now that I've given you some of the big points from this weekend that I took away, I'm going to go ahead and share with you um, some of the trades that I took last week. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Anytime. <laughs> okay, perfect. All right, so let's talk about a review of what happened last week while I get my screen back up here. Okay, so what happened last week? So this is one of the trades that I took. Um, and of course, I totally forgot to bring this up again. <laughs> I really need to look at my checklist for this. <laughs> so this is one of the trades that I took. And yes, it did lose. It didn't actually hit my stop loss because I caught it in time. But um, what I wanted to show you is that um, when I was making this trade, there's a lot of things that you can do to figure out where it's going to go, what's going to be happening, um, and how to minimize your risk, maximize yeah, maximize your return on investment. So what happened here? So based on what I was seeing, this thing right here, this gray line here, um, and these lines here, right, with these numbers on the side, that's what's called your Fibonacci, your Fibonacci retracement. And I forgot <laughs> to put this on. So thankfully this was in demo and I actually didn't lose any money. Um, but I treat my demo account like my real account because I want to mentally prepare myself for things like this, right? And so, hey, girl, hey, thanks for joining. Um, and so I forgot to do this. And so that's why um, I did not, it did not go exactly according to plan. So had I been paying attention, um, and I didn't get the screen on here, but there were indications that this is going down, but I didn't quite see it in time. So I could have actually stopped, uh, stopped out out here and gone in profit, but like I said, I didn't catch it in time. So what happened is um, it came back down, and we'll see right here, let me do this. So... If I had put on the Fibonacci retracement, I actually would have waited because at the time that I got into this trade, it was right here. It was already at the 50% retracement, which means that it was probably going to come back anytime soon, and clearly it did. So I should have put it on. I forgot, but that's why I'm doing this for you is to show you that it's not all, you know, winnings, right? Because last week I had like four or five wins and like one loss maybe I might be wrong numbers but it was mostly wins and I think I earned like one or two percent um, in my account last week this uh, excuse me the week before um, and this last week wasn't so much but mostly because I did not ensure that my environment was right so when you are trading you have to make sure that you are in a quiet environment you don't have any distractions because if you're distracted if you're emotional you are not going to be trading to the best of your ability so like I said, it, it hit the 618 retracement and then went back down, which is expected. This this is part of what you learn as a trader. So that was the first thing that happened, or one of the ones that was working on. This one I'm so mad at. So it did exactly what, oh no, not this one, not this one. This one, this one was also one that I forgot retracement on. Um, so right here and here. So it did hit 618. And had I been looking, um, I wouldn't have gotten in because it was already about right here. <laughs> so again, be sure you use your retracements before putting in your stop losses, excuse me, um, putting in your trades to make sure that you're not at the extent of your Fibonacci retracement. This is the one that I was mad at. <laughs> so <laughs> I was mad because this was a 20 pip um, trade that I was in on and got stopped out right here by 0.2 pips. I was so mad. Um, but I wanted to share this because this happens, right? You know, it's it, trading is, is, is an art. You know, you have to learn exactly what's going on. And sometimes, you know, your stop loss might be too big. It could, there could be any number of reasons that that stuff is happening, right? Um, so that's why I was mad and that's what happened. So there you go. <laughs> All right. But it did go in, in the direction I thought. I just, my stop loss was too small. So last week, these are the ones that um, 
were on the harmonic scanner. So as I showed you last week, the harmonic scanner is one of the tools that I use to be able to um, pinpoint trades, but also to leverage pitchforks because harmonic scans, um, basically they're patterns based off of Fibonacci numbers. The harmonic scans and pitchforks create a powerful combination and you can get multiple trades off of one pitchfork and the same harmonic scan. So um, as you see some of these screens, uh, again, I'll, I'll show those, uh, point those out to you. So that was last week. This is this week. Now, um, I initially had started looking at a different one. And what I mean by different is that this right here, this is FX Choice, which means this is one of the brokers that the Harmonic Scan um, product uh, utilizes to provide these, these signals. But there are multiple brokers. And if I had gone to the other one, there would have been like, a lot more, but I can't, uh, because I have a day job and I have a business and I'm also doing Forex, um, I can't do all of them all the time. So I, I chose to stick with this list um, for this week. Um, but again, if you want more information on how to use the tool for your own purposes, again, send me a message and let's get you started. All right, so current session, Tokyo. This uh, screenshot's actually a little delayed because um, it's not 8.29 on the 24th of February, but it is currently the Tokyo session. Um, it's going to be getting close to, oh, actually it might not be because I'm in Pacific time right now. So let's go ahead and check. It's really super easy to check. Um, what Forex market is open right now? And so it might be, this page. So I'm currently in Pacific. Oh no, America, there we go. Uh, I'm in Vegas, but I think it should, Los, Los Angeles should work. So I'm actually in the Frankfurt um, market right now. So the trades I'm looking at, planned on looking at, um, probably are not going to be optimal because each um, trading session has certain currencies that are more volatile during that session. Um, I will create a different training on specifically on Germany session, but we're going to go ahead and just look at what's currently there because they're all working. It's just during certain times of the day, they, um, other ones are going faster than, um, than other pairs. So right now it is the Germany session. Uh, let's go ahead and go back over here. So this is the wrong slide. Sorry about that. Um, oh, well. <laughs> um, actually, I wanted to show you a couple more things that happened this week. So this was a short. And uh, this one, I, I actually use this on my trading view. Um, this was a trick that one of the educators on that system that I've been telling you about shared with me is that um, instead of trying to keep a trading journal like I had been with an Excel spreadsheet, um, you can use it by creating a trade idea on TradingView. So that's what I started to do for a lot of them. I, it's not yet a habit yet, so it's not for all of them, all the trades that I'm taking, um, but this one was. As you can see, it did um, eventually go into the stop loss area, but I was making notes uh, about what was happening. So um, I noted, I made some notes about what I was seeing. I saw that it had crossed the 200 EMA on the one minute chart. And then I said that I closed it manually. So what happened here is that I actually closed it manually in profit. It wasn't a whole lot, um, but let's see. Yeah, I don't remember how much it was, but um, this one did go in profit. I think it was 1%. Pretty sure it was 1%. Um, but what what's cool about this is that you can actually see where else it went, right? So I wonder if it'll let me... No, it won't. So you can see how it acted, right? And as you can see, it's actually moving up um, inside the... Pitchfork. So this line right here, this um, solid green line right here, that's the meeting of the pitchfork. This green line right here, dash, is part of the Fibonelles. Um, and so it's moving within that pitchfork. So that was GVP USD. Oops. GVP JPY. Uh, this one I also did lose. Um, as I said, this is one that I didn't put a Fibonacci on, so I think this is the one I've already shown you. So let's go to this one. 
This is a short, and again, it did what I expected it to. However, um, it got stopped out uh, because, yeah. So I actually apparently did it manually because the hole flipped. It, unfortunately, it doesn't show the hole changing here. Um, I didn't know that, but um, it did flip somewhere around I think here, so I got out a little bit early before it hit stop loss, and it probably would have hit stop loss anyway because of the spread. Um, but I got out early, and I think this this one allowed me to have a 0.5% um, loss to my account. This one... This one was also, I noticed that the hole flipped, and I um, did it a little too late, and it did, uh, it was another 0.5% loss. This one, so what happened here, it did eventually hit my take profit here, but it hit my stop loss here. And so, if you look, it actually had started to range once it got up here. And after this weekend, I have some tools in my own tool belt to help me figure out when that's actually going to start happening. So be sure to stay tuned, and I will be sharing that information with you as well. All right. So we've just gone through what happened last week. Now, why is this important? It's important to understand that you may see people online talking about Forex and how they've made all these wins and all this, you know, money and whatnot, but you probably, they probably aren't sharing with you their losses as well. And Forex, it's not guaranteed that you win. So it's important that you know that it is possible to potentially lose, but if you, when you minimize your risk, maximize your ROI and learn from your mistakes and continue to grow and learn this skill set, you will become better, have less losses, and be able to do so much more for yourself, okay? So this particular one is uh, one of the scans that was pulled for this coming week. Um, I have the block on the right side because this is a um, copyrighted product and I want to do be legal with this. So again, if you are looking to improve your trading skills or just start to learn this, right, you need to get started with this because like I said, I cannot directly mentor you all the time. I can tell you, you know, what products to use and I can train you with what I know. But if you really want to cut down your learning curve, you have to get involved with this, get the education, get the direct mentorship, like, because there's over 60 hours every week and get involved with our community and you'll be able to get um, these signals as well with the stop loss take profits and all that so this was um, Australian dollar New Zealand dollar for the one hour and this is what it looks like on the actual chart um, at the time that I did this it's probably gonna look a little bit different now because this is a few hours ago but as you can see so um, for those that weren't on my last session hey Paul thank you for joining for those that weren't on my last session uh, what happens is is that for that harmonic scan, you put it on your chart, which is this thing right here, do 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 all the way. So, you know, it's these two triangles right here, and again, it's all Fibonacci. So you don't have to know the math; it does it all for you. But you put it on your chart, and then you put pitchforks, right? So um, the first one is X, C, D, and as you can see, it's pointing up. Right, because that's basically the direction that is happening from that side of the harmonic pattern. And then the other option that you can do is to do it from somewhere over here and then XA, and that's pointing down for this particular pattern, because this is actually um, whatever pattern that screenshot said, um, which indicates that it's going to go up, right? But it can go down, which is why you have the up and down pitch forks. So as you can see here, if my, there we go. You can see that once it hits here, right, it starts to go and play in the pitch fork. One of the rules of pitch forks, which is awesome, um, is that this point, right, where it hits that part of your pitch fork, um, these are potential support resistance signs, and you can see that, so it happened, right? So it goes up, it hit here, and for whatever reason, it decided to go down. Now, what happens with that? So I believe 80% of the time, if 
the price action does not hit your median line, then it's going to go lower than when it started. And that's exactly what happened here, right? So it started here, it went up here, right, right there, and then it went lower. It actually went below this uh, four hour support resistance line, which is right at the D, which was awesome, right? So it went lower and then it went back up just as uh, anticipated based off of the rules of pitchforks. So here we have a shark for AUD USD. We can see that it's doing the same thing here, right? AUD USD butterfly one hour. So this was an old scan, right? So the original scan for that is this thing right here on the left. And we can see that price action totally stayed within here. And it did exactly what, um, you know, pitch, pitchfork um, percentages talk about, right? So uh, we have that. Uh, what else we got? So this was your ONCD. Um, this one also already happened. So I put the take profits on here just so you can see what this does and, and how this works. So you don't see the take profits and stop losses um, right here on the right side because, I, like I said, you have to be a member to get those. But I wanted to show you what this looked like. So um, right here, this is when the pattern was called. It hit take profit one. Take profit two, almost hit take profit three, and that one six seventy five. So that basically almost was three hundred pips in about three days. So that's about an average of a hundred pips a day, which is huge. Okay. So for those of you that don't know, um, the number of pips is what determine the number of pips and what the currency pair is valued at is what determines how much money you make or lose. So if the value of a pip for this particular pair was a dollar and you gained, let's say, 250 pips, that means that you gained $250 in less than three days for a single setup. And there you go. Right? I mean, that's pretty freaking cool. And then there's, of course, there's commissions that the broker takes out and um, swap fees. But 250 bucks for like maybe, maybe $10. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take that. <laughs> so here's another one. Again, pitchforks. It's playing within it. It's already hit take profits one, two, and probably three. Uh, this one. Yeah, that one already definitely went through <laughs> Take Profit 3. Um, and as you can see, I've actually been um, doing some stuff in here. Oh, what's it going to do? There we go. Um, I saw that it was trending, excuse me, consolidating. Um, it looks like I haven't really been much in this one since. NZD CAD is one that I'm looking at. So this is what it currently looks like. It's already... So what's important about this one is that there's actually two two harmonic patterns here, okay? So we have this one on the left, and the side of it from the from right here is the start of a new pattern. Now, why is that important? That means that it was a harmonic pattern after harmonic pattern, so there's something really big right here. And what's even cooler, oh, I undid it, oops. What's even cooler is that this line right here between the X and D acts like support and resistance. This line between X and C right now is kind of a support and resistance as well. So price line is actually consolidating within these two support and resistance lines. So that's kind of really, really cool to be able to recognize. And I'm very excited to be able to see that and share this with you. So this is what a New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar looks like in the four hour. And this is what it looks like on the one hour. So again, it's very much the same, but here's even a third one, right? So here's one, this yellow one is two, and then of course the blank one is three, okay? So it's still the same price, you just see more candles because that's what those candles are, the representations of time. 
uh, NZD JPY. Uh, this is a current one as well. So, um, oh, maybe it isn't. Okay, well, that one had take profits on it. Um, I don't know what it looks like right now. I am not giving you signals. I'm simply sharing with you what was on that chart. Um, but that is uh, something that you can do when you have <laughs> this product. All right, so again, some more pitchforks. We see that it's playing completely within that pitchfork on that pattern. Same with this one. It actually did break out, though, which, again, is exactly how we are expecting it, right? Because here's the D. It didn't quite hit the median here. It broke out twice and then shot right back up. So it's probably going to hit median and, and possibly even when it hits, come back and do a retest and then take off again towards the top of the pitchfork. So this one is a brand new one. This is one that's probably going to be dropping because it's right there. So let me go ahead and um, make a quick note so we can go look at that one. Oh. Nope. Oh my gosh. So USD CAD. Uh, USD CHF or switch franc. We do see that it played within there and it's now broken out of that. Um, so the pitchfork can still come back into play because it does um, come back and play within those Fibonels. Um, but I'm not going to look at that one. So let's go ahead and just look at that last live. Okay. So USD CAD. Beautiful. In fact, um, I suspect that it's going to be coming back down pretty soon. So here's why. <clears throat> All right. So let's go ahead and, and do this first. Let's go back to let's go back to the day first. So right now, this brown line here is what's called a parallel channel. And this is for the month. So if I were to go to the month, you'd be able to see um, exactly why that's happening. All right. So we see that when the month candles are going, it's currently an uptrend for a month, for a week. Um, it's actually consolidating in the week. So when I say consolidation, I'm talking about this right here. Okay. Consolidation is a sideways trend. Let's go down to the daily. Daily is also in a sideways trend. However, I do, you might be kind of hard to see. Um, so let me see if I can make that a little bit brighter. So we see that the daily trend um, is moving sideways right now, the consolidation. On the four hour, now I know this looks a little confusing, so I'm going to point it out. Let me make this a little bit softer because this is an older fork for that one. Okay. I don't want you to get confused. So right now, we see on the four hour that candles are by it's almost almost at this pitchfork um, area here so this is very exciting um, let's see what else do we see here so let's go ahead and bring in this one is that on the four hour yep so we see that the We see that the MACD crossed here. So I have that blue vertical line there. And we see that it wasn't a downtrend until here when it was hitting the pitchfork. 
and then we see it shoot up, right? And so then we have these green bars, and those green bars are Hakanashi candles, and they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, which indicates a potential change in trend. We also see that the MACD here on the four hour that it's currently a buy. The blue is above, the red is below. The MACD histogram is currently green. However, it is getting a little bit lighter, right? It went from dark green to light green, which means that the vol, I think the volume, I think it's the volume, is um, in that buy is slowing down, which is also indicative of those Hakanashi candles um, shrinking. And we see that uh, the parabolic SARS are moving up, right, which is expected. So on the four hour, it looks like it's still going to go up, but it's a higher high. But like I said, it, it is hitting uh, about to hit that pitchfork. So let's go down to one hour because there's not much else I can share right now with this. All right, so on the one hour, we see a little bit of a difference. Okay, let's talk about this. Right here, MACD has crossed, indicating that it's now in a cell. If we bring that up, it's probably going to be this candle right here. We see, right, that this candle is a cell from Hakanashi, and the rest are green, but they're small. We see that... Come on. That on this candle, which is about where the MACD flipped, that the parabolic SAR also flipped, which is an indication of a sell for this one because it's now above the price candles. We also see that it's about to hit this pitchfork again and potentially go down. Okay. What else can we see with this? Pitchfork. Ah, oh yes. So over here. Hey, Fred, thanks for joining. So over here, we also see that these three tried to push past that yellow line, which is part of the quarters theory, um, what's it called, indicator. And then we see that it's trying to come back up and get this again, which usually when it hits um, support and resistance, it's either going to break through, it could break through, um, oops, break through and do a pass and check, right? Or it will try and get through there and then come back down. Now, what a way to think about this is like think of a rubber band, right? If you pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it, stretch, and then let go, it's going to snap right back. And that's kind of what happens when price tries to go against a support and resistance line. So um, either the buyers will be more powerful and break through if it's in an uptrend, or the sellers will be more powerful and break through if it's in a downtrend. Okay, so right now, um, remember how I said earlier that most people will wait two weeks for a paycheck but won't wait three days for a setup? This is one that I'm going to want to wait for uh, because this could, this could be the point where it's going to go and just dive and just be amazing, all right? Um, because the reason why this is so awesome is you have the potential to earn over 100 pips. Uh, and if you don't trust me, ah, oh, it didn't do it. It didn't hold. But that is potentially over 100 pips. And again, depending on what the price is per pip for this particular pair, that could be over $150 in who knows how, how many days or hours or whatever. All right. So what do we also see here? We can also see... I know it's a little hard to see, but there is a blue line that comes all the way up here, and another line that kind of does this, and a purple line in the middle. So this is part of your Bollinger Bands, and so we see that it has been kind of pushing up 
into um, the bands there, and then it, it came back through and became kind of a little bit more of a consolidation right through here. <coughs> but that's, again, that's that rubber band part that I was talking to you about before. All right, so that's the, that's the one hour. Let's go down to the 15 minute. Okay, so that's interesting. So right now in the 15 minute, it's still showing a buy. Um, based on what I'm seeing here, the price um, did come out and um, go a little bit past the pitchfork, but then it shot straight back down. It hit the 50, um, the quarters theory line here, came back up, hit the Bollinger Bands, hit the Bollinger Bands, hit the Bollinger Bands, hit the, I think that's the 50 EMA, and now it's going back up again. So I suspect that it's either going to hit the pitchfork or that quarters theory line and come back down. So why is that important? Because what you can do, a couple things with this, right? Um, some options for your trading is you can, I don't know what it's called. I'm sure there's a technical term for it. But if you do, I believe it's a sell limit. If you do a sell limit on this quarter theory line right here, and you put your take profit here on this quarter quarter line, what's cool about this is that if you expect it to go lower, you can do another sell limit or a sell stop. A sell stop, the difference between sell limit and sell stop is a sell limit is that it goes up first and then comes down, I believe. And a sell stop means once it hits that, it's, it's in a sell. Okay. The other one's kind of a, 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 f a longer wait. So if you did that, that would be about 25 pips. So that would that could very easily be um, a 20 pip gain. That can't be days. There's no way that stays because we're on 15 minutes. Okay, so this tool is a little wonky. <laughs> but that's still... Oh, actually, it's not wonky. So there, here's why. So if you look at this, there's a gap here. That gap is actually what, what happens on the weekend. So while it says there was two days, it's because it included the weekend. Okay? <laughs> so when it opened up, it opened up below the um, prior quarter theory line and then started to go back up. Okay? So right now we see... Oh, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> we see that the FAST indicator, which is an indicator provided to those who are within that community that I'm talking about. Um, so again, if you want this um, indicator, the 60 plus hours of direct live mentorship, the community, the tools and everything else like that, you have to get involved um, and you've got to get started. So just let me know, send me a message or connect with me on Daily Wealth Ninja. But this indicator is showing, um, I believe, I think it's like over 20 different indicators in one, um, telling you that buy, 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 buy. So right now it's a buy um, and it's indicating that it should be going up. You've got your Haganashi candle saying that's going up. You've got your MACD saying it's going up. But again, it's right here at the edge. It's right here. Um, it literally just hit the pitchfork. So I would actually wait on this because look, it's going down now. So most likely it's going to keep going down, even though this is a green because that's kind of how it works, right? Um, yeah, <laughs> I really want to get into this right now. <laughs> um, 
I really want to get into this right now. I'm going to do it. So I am not telling you to take this right now. Um, I am going to take this trade because I'm pretty sure this is going to do exactly as I expect it to. So what I do... Oh, that's not what I wanted. Um, oh, that was loud. I forgot about that. Can I mute it and not go off my voice? Oh, whatever. I'll just keep going. So what I do is I go to this uh, pip calculator. No, not pip calculator. Lot size calculator. And what I do is I will go and I will open up my MT4. I will then look to see how much is in my current account. So what you're looking at right now is not my live account. It's my demo account because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be testing some stuff that I learned this weekend. Um, and I see that's one, 1106. I'm just going to round it. So 1106 is the account size for that. I want to do a 1% risk ratio. I want to do a 10, per, 10 pip stop loss. And it's USD CAD. So calculate it's going to be 0 0.147. 0 0.147. So we're just going to say 1.4. And I believe it should still be a sell, but we're going to go to check. Still says green, still says buy. So the slush on this might, it still could go up. So let's go ahead and go down to the one minute after we look at some other stuff. Sorry, says up. Okay, let's go to one minute. One minute says sell, and it's a big sell. Um, the reason I say that is because down the, on the fast, it has a red on the top. Um, it's now on the, in the um, um, extremes. And that might be a little too high for it to be an extreme. But Parabolic Czar say sell. MACD says sell. Now, this is the one minute. So unless you, um, I wouldn't necessarily trade completely off the one minute. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to um, get tighter stop losses and, and um, all that. But if you, as you can see, it did hit the pitchfork here. I still think I want to wait, though. I see the Heikinashi is red. MACD is pretty solid. Let's go back to 15 minutes and see if it's changed. Yeah, this is, this is, this is rough. Because right now everything is actually pointing to a buy, even though it hit the pitchfork. So the reason why I'm struggling with this is because Every professional trader um, follows a trading plan. And your trading plan is based off of who you are as a person, your schedule, um, your risk investment, appetite, and so many different other factors, right? And because of this, you have to know what confirmations that you're going to take to get into a trade. And I'm debating with myself because FOMO is happening. So FOMO is fear of missing out. And um, I will be... Um, sharing more on this later from what I learned from this weekend, but because all of my indicators are telling me buy, even though I'm pretty sure it's going to go sell, I am not going to get in on this trade just yet, but I'm going to be watching it, I'm gonna, and I need to be setting some alerts. Um, so some alerts that you can do, I would prefer to do it on the, uh, the fast, but the, indica the indicators that I've, excuse me, the alerts I've done for the fast I don't think I've been doing them right, so I need to go back into the academy and um, make sure that I understand how to do that. Um, but for now, I'm just going to let it be as is. Um, and and what I have done in the past, and I'm going to do right now, is I'll go to that pair, USD CAD, and I'll actually flag it so that I know that I want to be um, on the lookout for that particular pair. So on flag, on flag, on flag. That way it's a, a fast thing that you can look at uh, to make sure that um, that you can quickly go back to it to check on it. Like if you're looking at other pairs and things like that. So I think that's what I want to share today. Let me go ahead and um, 
see if there are other pairs that we can look at. So USD CAD, USD CAD four hour. Ah. Oh, let's go look at the four hour. So, okay, so that makes more sense as to why it's currently saying a buy. So if we, when we look at the four hour, we see this is a very solid, solid buy, right? We still see that it's, it's trying to go up. Um, you won't see the fast because it's only on 15 in one minute. So let's see what else is going on. Because like I said, I'm, I am going to be a good little trader and make sure that I get all my confirmations on my ducks in a row before doing things. USD CAD. NCD, it's already done. This one might be a good one. Let's go look at NCD GPY. NCD JPY does look, that's the four hours. This is also a four. That was the one hour. So on the four hour, four hour definitely looks like it's going into a cell or is in a cell. MACD shows that it's in a buy though, so that is a little disconcerting. So we should go back to the one hour now, which is where that um, call was done. Sell, sell, perfect. Uh, so this is indication that it should be a sell on this one. 15 minute. Ooh, ooh, I'm getting excited. Look at that. That is a sell. So um, you've got the pair box are up here on the top saying it's a sell. You have the Heikinashi candle saying it's a sell. Um, what's cool about this is that this long wick means that it had some problems getting through that. And right now the candle is a buy, which means that sellers were very strong in the beginning, but right now the buyers are in control. Okay. So it's that means it started out here. Sellers pushed it all the way down. Buyers pushed it back up. Actually, probably pushed it all the way up because that's a very long wick. And then sellers are bringing it back down. So right now it's a very, very wicky thing, which means it's most likely in consolidation, right? Because it's it's having problem figuring out where what it wants where it wants to go. Um, but MACD is in a cell. It's crossed the threshold here. This threshold, right? Um, Ignore that TP1. I don't think that's actually a valid TP1. And so what we see, what do we see on FAST? FAST also says it's a sell, so this is a really good sign here. One minute. One minute says sell, but we do see it's pushing up and that the MACD is in a buy. So why is that important? We can actually see that there's a white pitchfork here, there's a green pitchfork here, and as you can see, it's actually between the two. So right now for the NZD JPY, ooh, look at that, it went up higher. So even though the fast time indicator is in a sell, the MACD is in a buy, and so it keeps pushing it past. So this one, I think it's going to go back. Yeah, it's doing exactly what I was about to say. It's going to go push up into the um, Bollinger Bands. Uh, but we do see that it's trying to come back down. So I would definitely keep an eye on this one as well. NZD JPY. Let's go back and see what USD CAD has. Sell, sell. What's 15 minutes say? Bye, bye. Mm. Mm. I don't like that. Yeah, I'd still, I'd still stay to wait on this one, because the reason for that is because you don't really.
let's do this. Let's add a couple of things on here because this is just, my FOMO is just hitting me real bad. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's ranging. Okay, what do I see in here? <clears throat> Still, still not comfortable with, with saying that's a sell just yet. It is on the one minute for sure, but that 15, oh, see, look, that candle came up. All right, so what other options do we have here to try and see? I want to use one that hasn't gotten take profit yet to show you a little later, like next week or maybe later this week. Um, how powerful that can be. Okay, so AUD USD on the on the four hour. Oh. Come on, make that flip. All right. So on the four hour. We see that, oh, interesting. We see that on the four hour, it, it hit a Fibonel of the pitchfork and then came back down. So I suspect it's going to keep coming down a little bit more. Yep, buy can prove that. Parabolic SAR is potentially going to prove that. But I think it's going to keep going down. It could bounce off this um, quarters mark and come back up, which would be a little bit different than what I was saying earlier about the pitchfork. But I only see that because um, the quarters theory is basically these um, support resistance lines are very strong. So it very well could bounce off that and come back up. But most of the time with pitchforks, it's a um, longer drop if it doesn't get to the median, right? So here's, oops. So right here's the median, and here is the beginning of the pitchfork. There is where it started to come back down. Super wicky on both sides on this candle. Beginning to be wicky here. Hagenoshi does say sell, and so does MACD. So let's go ahead and look at the one hour on this. Ooh, beautiful. All right. So what I've done is I've added a one hour trend line and I'm going to be looking for it to actually break that trend line before going into a buy, okay? Um, as for it going into a sell, there's not really enough points here to make a trend line. You could try to if you just wanted to um, kind of have an idea as to where it's, how deep it's going to go. But honestly, I, I'm, I'm curious. Now, don't quote me on this because I don't know it for sure. I haven't done the testing on it. But as far as pitchforks go, I don't know if the breaks, in like in a, um, in a weekend session, if those have any particular uh, re uh, changes to what happens with that pitchfork. We also have news coming up, so it would probably behoove you not to trade since most people don't understand um, the difference between fundamentals. Not so not most people, well, it's true, most people, but traders, uh, most people who are traders are either fundamental traders or news traders. Um, I myself am a fundamental trader, which means I'm, I look at the charts. Um, but the news can have some major impacts. It means that it could um, potentially hit your stop loss a lot faster. And so um, 
you might not want to trade this right now, um, but you can, right? It's your choice. Make sure you uh, make that informed decision. But right now, uh, we see that the Heikinashi candle is red. We see that it's possibly going to cross on the MACD. But again, this one, I would just say, I personally, I would wait because this particular harmonic scan pattern indicates that, there's, that the price should go up. So I'm not, I'm going to play this one safe because I'm... FOMO is not your friend, and when you play with the when when you trade when your emotions are high, you are more than likely not going to go in the direction that you're looking for. So I'm gonna put AUDUSD on my orange flag here, and this one I'm actually going to add an alert. So I'm double clicking on that line that I just drew, clicking on the alert section, condition AUDUSD. That means the price bars. When the bars I'm going to say greater than. I think that's accurate. Or when they're greater than that arrow, which means they've crossed that arrow. So the new bar should be above that line. I want this to let me know. So broke one hour trend. Uh, in fact, I might even, I'm, I'm going to wait because I think it does it only on the time frame that you're looking at. So I'm going to go ahead and go a little bit lower into the 15 minute. 15 minute says sell. How many is that anyway? I might I might want to get in that. So this is an easy 10 pips right now actually. What does the 15 minute say? Ooh. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> sell, sell. Ooh. All right, so let's do AUD USD. Same deal. AUD USD. Calculate. It's 0.11 for my particular lot size. Please do it for your own, for your trades. AUD USD. And again, I am not a licensed professional. This is purely for myself. I'm showing you what I am choosing for myself. I am not telling you what you should do with your money. Please speak with a licensed professional advisor if you uh, want to invest. Um, so, all right, so let's go ahead and add in our stuff. All right, so this was done on 37, perfect. The original price was 70803. I'm going to have a 10 pip stop loss. Yes, it says 100. I don't know why. <laughs> you have to do 100 for 10, but you just do. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. It's already in profit. That's awesome. Well, this doesn't show a profit here. Um, so that could be any number of reasons. It could be commission. It could be um, uh, spread. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's, that includes commission. So it shows that it's in green on my channel, but it shows that it's currently zero here. It could be a number of things that why it's different. So now that I have this on here, I'm going to take these numbers and put them into my MetaTrader profit level. <clears throat> and stop level. This is so exciting. So how do we know when to get out? So right now, this is actually approaching the end of the pitchfork. OK, so it's very possible it can hit that pitchfork and go straight back up. What I am going to do is I'm actually going to go back over here. AUD. USD. Because I want to watch this. Now, you do not have to watch your trades. 
Um, you can set alerts. You can um, put them on your phone. You can do all kinds of really cool stuff. Um, so you do not have to watch your trades. And in fact, you really don't want to because then you're just tied down to a job, right? Um, you are tied down to your emotions. And again, you don't want to trade when you're dealing with emotions. So right now, this looks like uh, it's, I wonder if there's anything. So on the one minute, it is really pushing into the bands. On my MACD here, I need to relook at those settings. It looks like it's still in a cell. So everything looks right now that it should be in a cell. I th think if memory serves, oh, I know what I wanted to do. Um, which. So the spread on this is 0.7 points. So I believe what that means is 0.8 points from wherever your stop loss or t uh, stop loss is is where it will actually stop out. Um, I'll have to look at that exactly for number wise, but I think because of that, if I really wanted to, I could move my stop loss at this point to be in profit. Um, but I'm hesitant to do that for a few reasons. See, now it's going up. Oh, I know what else I need to be doing right now. I need to be turning on some stuff. I totally forgot to be looking at that. Oops. Um, in fact, I also have to make a change. So give me just one second to make this change. And the reason why I'm doing this is not because I'm trying to hide anything from you. It's because the indicator that I'm about to make changes on, um, there's a password for it. And I can't share that except with those who are a part of the community. So again, if you want this information, um, please come in and um, join the community so you can get all of this and really leverage it for yourself. Okay. So let me share my screen. So as you can see, maybe, Ooh, I may have to get out early, that's okay. So we see that the 200 and the 50 EMA, so the 200 EMA is that, oh, it just went out of off screen. 250 is those big pluses, this is the 50 um, EMA, uh, yeah, and it says red, we see that the whole is a red here, um, which means the current time frame is, is a cell. This red background back here means that the 15 minute time frame is a cell. And So once this happens, oh, did that really just happen? So what's happening right now, let me zoom in for you. No, it already went through. Um, so what was ha what was happening is that it hit the uh, four hour support resistance line, and um, it was having some issues breaking through. In fact, it looks like the wick on the prior candle for the one minute um, went back and then came back up. But this other candle has gone through and is working its way down. Now the reason why I haven't stopped out yet, even though this right here shows green on the 
fast indicator is because the hull currently still says sell on both the one, uh, one minute time frame as well as the 15 minute time frame. So until that turns, I really don't want to um, get out of this trade or um, any of that. So I'm going to go ahead and hop off now. I've been on here for about an hour, I think. Um, if you have any questions, again, please feel free to reach out. Um, be sure to follow my journey over on Daily Wealth Ninja. If you are watching this on YouTube, be sure to click on the subscribe button, most likely going to be here. And if you are watching this on Facebook, be sure to um, tap on the live button. Now, like I said, the tools, the training, the mentorship, the incredible heart of the people and the leaders of this community are amazing. And if you're looking to either supplement your income, replace your income, or teach your children how to be able to pay for college, oh my gosh, I wish I'd known this when I was in college before. But if this is something that you want to learn more about, then you need to be sure that you leverage what I have. Because if you try and learn this from me through YouTube for free, it will take you longer. You might get confused. You won't necessarily have someone who can provide you the feedback required to help make sure that you're on the right track. So again, if you want to go, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And the community, myself, we want to make sure that you succeed. So feel free to send me a message. Let's get you started. And I will see you on the next one. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful and prosperous rest of your day. And I'll see you then.